Kia ora. Hello. My name is Lauren and I'm from the University of Otago here in New Zealand. Thanks very much for joining this information session where I'll share more information about study abroad opportunities here at the University of Otago. So I hope you find this session useful. First, I'd like to start out with a bit of information around New Zealand, Dunedin and the South Island to help set the scene of the environment that you'll be in. Now, some of you may already know a little bit about New Zealand, but if you don't, here are a couple of things um, to help give you a bit of background. New Zealand is not what you call a large country. Um, we're home to about 5 million people, but it's a really clean, green, safe environment um, with some amazing scenery and landscapes. We do have three official languages. Um, we are an English speaking country, but you'll also become familiar with Māori, which is our indigenous language, and also New Zealand Sign Language is recognised as one of our other official languages. Now, you may know New Zealand through films like The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and certainly some of that stunning scenery you see in those films um, you can explore when you're here in the country too. So that just gives you a bit of a, an idea of New Zealand if you didn't know anything about it. Now the city of Dunedin, which is where the University of Otago is located, is on the southeast coast of the South Island of New Zealand. You'll see the picture here is a bit of a bird's eye view over the city. So we do have um, amazing coastal views. We've got the harbour, and we've got a few mountains or hills. Um, so if you're interested in hiking or mountain biking, um, there's certainly a lot of outdoor activity you can get involved in. Now, in terms of traveling to Dunedin or to New Zealand, um, the map on the right of, the New, of New Zealand gives you a bit of a sense of um, proximity. So Auckland is one of the main international airports that generally people would fly into. And then to get down to Dunedin, it's less than two hours flight time. There's also another big international airport in the South Island in Christchurch. So if you're flying between Christchurch and Dunedin, it's less than one hour flight time. And then if you're looking at driving, again, just to give you a sense of the distance, it's about four and a half hours drive time between Christchurch and Dunedin. Now on the left hand side you'll see a map of the South Island um, and that's just in a little bit more detail. So some of the amazing locations like Queenstown and Monica um, in central Otago are really popular destinations to do travel to. So if you're interested in hiking and skiing and some beautiful New Zealand famed walks then that's about three and a half hours drive time from Dunedin. So it is really easy to access um, a lot of the amazing locations across New Zealand. In terms of Dunedin as a city, um, we're not what you would call a big city. Our population is just under 131,000, but a big chunk of our population is made up of students. So it's a really young, vibrant, educational city. Not surprisingly, um, it does mean that Dunedin has the youngest population in New Zealand, with 45% of the residents being under the age of 30. Now, it might not be a big city, but there's a lot to do here, and generally most people really rate the quality of life um, as a really good or extremely good um, environment and place to be. People are very relaxed, they're really easygoing, and they're really friendly. We've also been recognised as New Zealand's first UNESCO creative city. So in 2014, we were awarded the city of literature status. So there's lots of um, wonderful art and culture in Dunedin. This slide here gives you a bit of a visual overview of, of the city and the environment um, all in one go. So the image in the middle is another overview of the city. You'll see on the right um, where the university is labelled is North Dunedin. So the campus is all located very centrally. Students live on or around campus, so it's a real student area. The university borders the beautiful Dunedin Botanic Gardens on one side, and on the other, it's where it merges right into the, into the city. 
So if you were walking from the university campus into the very heart of the, the city of Dunedin, it would probably take you about 15 minutes. And obviously on the way, there are a number of cafes, restaurants, shops, um, movie theatres and, and all sorts of activities. And then you'll see on the far left, we've got St. Clair Beach. And that's one of a number of beautiful beaches we have in Dunedin. They've got a great surf school there. And they've also got the beautiful saltwater pool, um, which you'll see in the top left of the screen as well. Dunedin is great for coffee, for good food. Um, there's great farmers markets um, and lots of other activities that you can get involved in. Now, I mentioned earlier um, when we were looking at the maps, the South Island, and it really is an amazing place to explore. We're really lucky with our location in Dunedin is it's very much a gateway through to places like Queenstown, Wanaka and other areas in the South Island. So within three to three and a half hours, you could be at a number of ski fields, you could be hiking, you could be at lakes, um, you could be doing bicycle tours um, and a number of the famed New Zealand famed great walks. So if you're into the outdoors and you want to explore, this really is an amazing place to be located. I just wanted to share a couple of images um, instead of just talking about how beautiful the scenery is. So this gives you a bit of an idea of the, the range of environments. Um, the picture in the top left is the St. Clair Saltwater Pool. And that's particularly nice in summer when it's a little bit warmer. But then you've also got some amazing lakes, um, mountains, and of course, some beautiful wildlife. So Dunedin is really fortunate with the harbour that we have penguins, we've got baby fur seals, sea lions, uh, an amazing albatross colony. So there's lots of beautiful wildlife um, right on our doorstep as well. Got a few more pictures here, Milford Sound, which I personally think is one of the most beautiful places in New Zealand. Um, as well as some of the other extreme activities like your bungee jumping or your skiing. All right, now hopefully that helps you see a little bit about um, the environment you're in. But now I want to talk a little bit more about the university and why you would choose to study at Otago. So the University of Otago is New Zealand's first and oldest university. So we're really proud of the rich history and tradition that comes with that. We are an academically excellent university and we're ranked in the top 1% of universities in the world. As well as being an amazing place to get a great education, we've also been voted the, new, the best university in New Zealand for the overall student experience. So while we want you to make the most of your academic studies, we also want you to get involved in extracurricular activities. We want you to meet friends and develop lifelong skills. But it's also one of the reasons that makes us such a destination university. So more than 85% of students at the University of Otago come from outside of Dunedin. So like you, they are packing their bags and they say goodbye to friends and family to travel to Dunedin, which makes it really welcoming and really friendly. There's a couple of other key stats here. Um, a lot of these I've probably touched on already. We are a really comprehensive university uh, and we offer more than 190 undergraduate and postgraduate programs. We've got a fantastic campus watch team. So they patrol not only the campus, but the student areas, so the living quarters as well, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just to make sure people feel safe. They've got support. Um, they're great people to ask if you're wanting to know where your lecture theatre is or even just where you can go and get a good coffee. Um, they're an amazing team and we're very lucky to have them. We've also been recognised as New Zealand's top university for students' educational performance. So again, the support system we have in place to make sure students do well when they're here um, has been recognised. As well as being in the top 1% in the world um, for, for study, we are recognised for certain subject areas. So I've got a couple of those listed on the screen here. So things like sports science, um, we're ranked 14th best in the world. And then we've got some other subjects too, like our dental faculty, anatomy, physiology, archaeology, as well as some of the theology and religious studies are all in the top 50 in the world. We also have a number of other subject areas in the top 100, in the top 150. 
um, but again, there's a huge range of subjects available. One of the rankings that I like to talk about is actually our campus. So the beautiful campus here in Dunedin has been ranked among the 15 most beautiful campuses in the world. The clock tower, which you'll see to the right of the image there, is very much an iconic um, picture for Otago. And the international office is really fortunate to have offices located in that building. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about what you can study at the University of Otago. We have four main academic divisions. So these are our business school, our science division, our health sciences division, as well as humanities and social sciences, which is like liberal arts. So just to touch on these in a little bit more detail, um, this gives you a bit of an overview of the disciplines available within the business school. So things like accounting and finance, economics, as well as areas in tourism and entrepreneurship as well. A science division is a really comprehensive um, area. So there's a huge range of subjects you can study in the science uh, in the sciences. So the list on the screen here is certainly by no means comprehensive. We cover the hard sciences, so things like chemistry, physics, biology, maths and stats, as well as, as, well as other areas like psychology and environmental science. So there's a huge range of opportunity to get hands-on or fieldwork components, um, as well as make the most of our amazing lab facilities too. Health sciences is another big division here at Otago. So for our degree seeking students, um, this is home to things like our medical school and our dental school. If you are a pre-med student, um, this is a great division that offers some brilliant um, courses that you can study to help with you know, any pre-med study. Um, if you're interested in biomedical sciences or general public health, then certainly for study abroad students, there are, there are some opportunities to study here as well. Last but not least is our humanities division. So we have more than 40 different majors available in humanities. Um, as you can see, the list there just gives you a bit of a range of some of the disciplines available, like our music, languages and culture, global studies. And we also have Tutumu, which is our School of Māori and Indigenous Studies. Um, and that's a great place to learn a little bit more about New Zealand while you're here. Of course, while you are immersed in a new culture and a new country, um, there are some great options available to learn and combine that New Zealand aspect. So this just gives you some idea of some of the courses um, available for you to study with that New Zealand flavour. All right, the last section I wanted to talk about is life on campus, um, living or the accommodation, and also the general student support that we have available. We have a wonderful setup for accommodation for study abroad students in our university flats or uni flats as we call them. These are flats that are sort of on and around campus. Typically they have about four to six people per flat. So everyone has their own room, it's fully furnished and you'll be living with like-minded people. So they could be other international students from all over the world. Um, as well as a domestic New Zealand student that we call a Kiwi host. So the idea is that you get to learn more about New Zealand culture, you get immersed in the New Zealand community and environment, um, but you're living with people who have similar interests to you. You learn to cook together um, and generally come up with your flat routine. We also have an amazing support um, network with UniFlats. So they have dedicated community support workers um, that, that organize all sorts of social events. Um, they will take you to a local marae, um, as well as other cooking nights, quiz nights, and all sorts of activities. So it's an amazing community within the UniFlats um, accommodation setup. We have a huge range of service, um, services and support set up to help students um, because we really want you to make the most out of your time here at Otago. These are just some of the support services available. Um, a couple I wanted to highlight are our international support team who work with all of the different services across campus um, and they're a great point of call for 
all student international students. So for any queries, whether it's around accommodation, whether it's around just understanding the New Zealand accent, um, or maybe you need help with um, any, anything at all, they can point you in the right direction. A social impact studio is a great thing to get involved with. They do, um, it's a student lead setup, so they do all sorts of activities around mental health and well-being. They've got a great uni crew set up. So if you're interested in doing volunteer work, getting involved in the local community or having something added to your CV, there's certainly some amazing opportunities there. We've also got the student learning development team. So if you are having to write an assignment or an essay, and maybe there's a slightly different referencing guide, then they will have workshops to help you through that. So that just gives you a bit of an idea of some of the services and support available. We also have our clubs and societies. With more than 150 different clubs and societies, um, students uh, have a great um, range of activities to get involved in. So they could be cultural clubs that you join, some of the really popular ones are our tramping club, which is hiking, um, as well as the ski club. They've also got great facilities there. Um, they do $4 lunches and they also offer free breakfasts over the exam period. And last but certainly not least, I wanted to highlight Unipol, which is our gym or sports facility um, here on campus. So Unipol, the gym is free for all students to use. They've got great equipment, um, good workout rooms, they do group fitness classes, and they also have equipment that you can hire. So if you're interested in learning to surf, or maybe paddle ward, you can hire the equipment for a really cheap um, rate and go out and, and use that. They also facilitate a number of excursions. So if you're interested in um, mountain biking or maybe going on a ski trip, they will have package deals set up for our international students and for our local students as well, where they organise everything for you. So it's certainly um, a great facility to, um, to use. All right, so that's the most of the information I wanted to cover in the information session today. But of course, um, we encourage you to have a look at our website, um, have a read through our study abroad and exchange guide, um, and if you do have any other questions, then don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, the university's email address is university at otago.ac.nz. And of course, you're welcome to follow us on the various social media channels as well. Thanks very much for joining me.